Welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan, and today we ask the question, what would happen if we set off a nuclear bomb in space? Despite having Space Force now, we haven't had any reason to bomb anything in space. We haven't had any extraterrestrial enemies, and there aren't any planet-threatening asteroids that would need to be dealt with. But what would happen if one of those scenarios actually happened? Let's look at what happens on Earth first. When a nuclear weapon goes off near the surface, the density of the air is enough to reduce the nuclear radiation to a point that the effects are less detrimental than those of the blast and thermal radiation. Essentially, the thickness of our air limits the bomb's range, and that's a good thing. But in space, there is no air. So does that mean, yep, in space, that distance is actually amplified as there is no resistance? But that's the nuclear radiation that is extended. The blast itself, that's practically non-existent. That's right, in the absence of an atmosphere, the two things that were the most dangerous on Earth, the blast and thermal radiation, simply disappear. This is because the blast wave is heating the air on Earth, and the radiation is a high frequency that doesn't do so well in space. Nuclear radiation, however, is a different story. Since there is no atmosphere to reduce the effect, the only degradation comes from distance. Because of this, the dosage one would take from this explosion is many times greater than on Earth. Meaning, if an astronaut was near that explosion, they would take on far more nuclear radiation, even at ranges that would otherwise not be a concern on Earth. Looking at this graph, we can see that the dosage in relation to the distance is significantly higher in space. It essentially drops off immediately on Earth within a couple miles, but in space it spans out beyond 40 miles and nearly flattens out beyond the edge of the chart. It is highly likely that in the case of space nukes being multi-megaton warheads, the lethal radiation would be hundreds of miles out. In a world where we either need to protect ourselves from some alien threat, or maybe even a space war between countries, one thing is very clear. We would need to create spacecrafts for our astronauts that could protect them from the intense radiation that we would be exposing them to. I guess it's more like using a gas bomb than an explosive bomb. Let's consider the fact pfft, let's consider the fact that we would most likely be using machines of some sort to do this nasty work by the time this is a concern. In that case, we would of course still need to be worried about things like ISS, but otherwise our atmosphere would protect everyone here on Earth. But our electronics and communications, well, <laughs> that's another story. In 1958, we detonated nuclear warheads over Johnston Island in the Pacific. While there are many stories about how visually impressive it was, as far as 2,000 miles away, the disruptive effects it had on radio communications was extensive. There were outages for several hours and in a radius of a few hundred miles. For us on Earth, these space nukes would be similar to getting hit by giant solar flares. And 1958 wasn't the only time we did that. The most famous of all would probably be the 1962 Starfish Prime. In that test, they used a 1.4 megaton bomb, which was 500 times as powerful as the one that fell on Hiroshima. Starfish Prime was 250 miles above our surface, making it one of the last and largest high altitude nuclear tests. The point of this and previous tests was to see how radiation affected Earth's upper atmosphere. The explosion caused particles to collide with molecules in Earth's atmosphere, creating an artificial aurora that was seen as far away as New Zealand. One year later, the US, the UK, and the USSR signed the Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. And that's why we haven't seen any more space bombs, which I'm actually very thankful for because at one point the US military was going to set off a nuclear blast on the moon. Starfish Prime even damaged many satellites and messed with the electrons of the Van Allen belts. I want to note that while looking into this, I could not find any information on potential radiation poisoning from this test. But even then, as we learned at the beginning of this video, the levels would be incredibly low as this took place 250 miles above the surface. If you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely want to watch this one where I talk about the Parker Solar Probe and why we should be worried about solar flares. And as always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?